Okay. My name is Lori Guzda. I'm an artist, a writer, a performer, a, a marketer, a photographer. Basically, I'm a storyteller. Grew up in Stanford and you know lived in New York, lived in LA, in Austin, San Francisco. You know, I, I, I always lived in cities. And I guess it was, um, it was right around the millennium, you know, 99, 2000. I was like, I, I wanna live in the woods. Do I want to live in the woods or do I just love the idea of living in the woods? Again, life, right? I get this job creating a children's environmental education program in Yellowstone National Park. What? Just, I mean, my office was Yellowstone National Park. I got to tour the entire park with the interpreters, got to stay in every place in the park. Then I spent two weeks in ranger training with the world's foremost experts on wolves, thermophiles, guys. It was absolutely incredible. And I realized I love this and I, I can live in the woods. So we ended up moving here, you know, and the, and the plan was going to be, you know, a five-year plan and then we would go somewhere else. But I had always loved this area. And when I got here, I just really felt at home. And it's ideal because I'm still two hours from New York. I mean, I still, I still love going to the city. I, I'll always have a city in me. But to have a choice to live here, even snow shoveling, as grueling as it can be, you know, there's that moment that you stop and oh, it cleanses you and gets rid of all the crud that it, it leaves room to be inspired and to create.
not being able to hug somebody, not being able to have dinner with friends. And a lot of the things just started to weigh heavily, you know, and then I just kind of went into a dark space. And then it was like, that's not me. And I don't like being there. So I really made a conscious choice at the beginning of the year that I'm, I'm, I'm not going to, I'm going to, I'm going to focus on being healthy. So started exercising more, started eating better food, uh, eliminating anything that was not good for me. And that really started to open up the door and to let that voice speak to me louder and clearer. So the inspiration for this current current work that I'm I'm putting together. <laughs> so again, I, I love humor and comedy. And I literally was walking and found this stick. And I don't know why. I just like the stick. I like rocks too. I have a thing for rocks. I don't know why. I just I see a rock and it's like it wants to come home with me. So I found this stick and I was going to make a slingshot. <laughs> and then it it just kind of evolved into this weaving thing. Then this was kind of just looking like a stick, so it just it just began, I just kept adding to it. Each piece of wood, each stick had its own personality. And the shapes of them, I mean even when you look at this one that it has, you know, it's kind of like a half a reindeer head. It you know, what am I going to put in here? I don't know. Will I weave another section? Will I add something else here? It gives me room. And as I work on weaving it, it's going to talk to me and it's going to evolve into what it wants. I love repurposing. I love, I remember wearing this shirt. I remember having a great time on a beach wearing this shirt. And now this shirt's going to have a whole new life. I, and that excites me. The faces to me added the, uh, really added the feminine and a sensuality to these pieces. I love my girlfriends. My girlfriends are amazing. When you have girlfriends, you can do anything. You can move mountains. And I just assumed everybody had girlfriends. So I started asking women about their girlfriends. And I was really surprised how many women didn't trust women. When I look at women, especially the most successful women that I know, and, and you know, talking, you know, Fortune 500 companies, they've had to work so hard to get a seat at that table that Often when there's another woman coming up the ranks, again, that competitiveness seems to kick in and they don't want to jeopardize their seat at the table, which really now has evolved to this conversation of perhaps we need our own tables. For women to have the strength and numbers and the equality, we really need to help each other and have each other's backs and be supportive and not allow bad behavior to continue because that's the way it's always been. No more. Time's up. Color helps you express a story and just as much as words do when you're writing a story. I have certain color combinations that I just love. I can't get enough of them. So it's so funny. I love that like chocolate brown with that like rich cowboy blue or India blue. And it's so funny because like I'll watch like an old Charlton Heston movie and that's what he's wearing. And there's just, I'll see it. And it's like, I just love that combination. I love brown and purple. And sometimes that's a really hard combination to pull off because they almost look the same sometimes. So I just, I love experimenting and playing with it when it's a bold contrast or when there's just a slight contrast. But again, even in the larger piece that I did, 
as I started weaving the black into the rope, you know, originally it was going to have a, a, lots of color. And halfway through, I was like, no, I just wanted the black. I like that it's getting bigger. And I think that's what's happening with these pieces. As I work on them, they want to get bigger and bigger. I liked having the piece that would hang. And this is where I talked about, I, I, I wanted to stay with the black, the black and the, and the brown, the the real organic of the rope. So the face, where I was gonna put the face, originally the face was gonna live in here, but it just didn't feel right. Then it was gonna be the face was gonna be up here. Then it was like, well, maybe I'll put a few faces. And then all of a sudden the, the box called to me. And then having the, the broken glass of how many women have to walk through broken glass? to get to where they wanna be. You know, giving her this little crown of beads of royalty, of power, and putting that really kind of center just made it much more powerful. It took on a life of its own, and to me, this was really the final piece that really brought it all together. You know, without it, it's a pretty wall hanging. This now made it a different piece altogether. People are like, you know, oh, I've always wanted to be an artist. You know, everybody's an artist. Everybody's creative. Everybody has a talent. The, the challenge is doing it. And so many people get so caught up. And I think when you first start being the artist that you are, you know, you want everything to be perfect. And, and you worry about what people are going to say or think or critique. And I, the point is to do it. You know, when you go to a museum and you look at half the pieces that are hanging in the museum that are worth millions of dollars, you know, some of them are like, wow. Other ones are like, hmm, okay. But the point is that they did it. And just do it. If you have something to say and do, and I find that the more I do it, that the more that that uh, voice inside speaks to me and guides me through the process.